published, 1340 EST, February 10, 2018, updated, 1451 EST, February 11, 2018 So much for Kiwi Brotherhood, it was a TMO who grew up one hour's drive from Warren Gatlands, hometown in New Zealand whose controversial decision helped England to victory. Two tries from Johnny May ultimately kept the English Grand Slam dream alive, but it would have been an entirely different story if Gareth Anscombe's first half try had not been chalked off. Video reviewer Glenn Newman was the name on everybody's lips. England continued the defense of their Six Nations title as they narrowly edged Wales in a brutal battle at Twickenham. England had to defend well for large periods of the second half but kept Wales at bay to win their second match of the event. Eddie Jones's attacking forces clicked inside three minutes and England had the first try through winger Johnny May Owen. Farrell produced an exceptional 30-yard grubber kick into the path of May, who won the race and dived over the try line. Jonathan Joseph jumped on May and delight as a winger celebrated scoring his first try in the Six Nations competition despite questionable evidence to support his decision. Newman claimed the Wales fullback had failed to ground the ball as he appeared to hold off the defensive challenge of Anthony Watson. Scotland seethed, his own countrymen had rained on the Welsh parade. You fly a guy over from New Zealand and has one big call to make, said the Wales coach. Unfortunately, I think he has made a terrible mistake. At this level, that is pretty disappointing. Guys have to get those decisions right. It looked like a try to me and everyone else I have spoken to has said it looked like a clear try. It's disappointing. It was such a big decision in the game. Ironically, it was a crossfield kick by Reese Patchell that set up a no try apostrophe. Eddie Jones had singled out Patchell's bottle during the week, and the England coach was almost forced to eat his words with a bottle of Welsh hot sauce. Just 15 minutes later in May doubled his tally as the ball made its way out wide after several phases of physical play England squeezed the ball out wide and Joe Launchbury delicately flicked it inside and May collected it before running and Farrell made up for missing his first conversion by scoring the second to give England a 12-0 lead at Twickenham Wales got onto the scoreboard shortly after with a penalty from Rhys Patchell but they were aggrieved not to have had more early on, however. It seemed Jones had found a way into Patchell's head. England focused their attack on the Wales fly half and reaped rewards in the opening quarter. Jonathan Joseph shot up in midfield to cut off his favoured long pass, while England's kickers targeted the 24-year-old when he dropped back to cover in the backfield. With experienced Lee Halfpenny pulling out before kickoff, Wales' new look back three were vulnerable with their defensive positioning. Danny Kerr, George Ford and Owen Farrell took full advantage. England's number nine targeted a box kick on Patchell. With Watson winning the chase to claim possession Wales thought they had found a way back into the match when Gareth Anscombe seemed to beat Anthony Watson to the ball TV replays indicated Anscombe got there first with downward pressure but the TMO would judge there wasn't sufficient force Anscombe scored a penalty with just under five minutes remaining but Wales could not find the seven points needed to win England Sam Underhill produces a last-ditch tackle on Wales Scott Williams to stop him from scoring a try in the second half Wales wingers found themselves in no man's land and Farrell pinged a low kick across field for Johnny May to score the opening try. The psychological sledgehammer appeared to be working. Patchell pulled his first penalty to the left of the post's end. After 20 minutes, England scored their second. The forwards turned on their powerful pick-and-go game and, to the backdrop, a eerily quiet crowd. They surged upfield with 25 phases. Welsh defenders were sucked in and, as Ford and Farrell demonstrated the sharpest wit, England, flooded out left for May's second. Scoring after a majestic offload by Joe Launchbury, Wales, however, were undeterred, as England's attack dried up in the final hour. Tempers flared up throughout the first half with Gareth Davis and Farrell clashing before referee Jerome Garcia stepped in England powerhouse Courtney Laws climbs high to narrowly get the better of Wales. Corey Hill in the line out England's Mero Atoye unsuccessfully attempts to block a box kick from Welsh scrum half Davis during Saturday evening's tie Johnny May had not scored a Six Nations try. Now he has two after his double on Saturday. The first try owed everything to the awareness of Owen Farrell, who delivered an exquisite kick into space behind the Welsh lines. May flew down the wing as four Wales defenders tried to match him for pace but he slid into score. Dylan Hartley suffered a facial wound after 42 seconds and the visitors found an upper hand at the lineout. Gotland's side were missing a host of Lions stars, including Warburton, Toby Flatow, and Dan Bigger, 
and are developing newfound depth in their absence. It was the new combination of Anscombe and Patchell which forced Jerome Garces to go upstairs after 24 minutes, when Newman wrote his name into the history of Anglo-Welsh rivalry. It is now okay to talk, said Wales captain Alan Wynne-Jones to Garces. The lock question England's growing penalty count and Welsh frustrations bubble, with scuffles breaking out between Ross Moriarty, Farrell. Sam Simley, and Courtney Laws, all Wales had to show for their first half efforts was one patchel penalty. With England's clever defensive patterns thwarting the previously free-flowing Welsh attack, maligned fullback Mike Brown dominated the Battle of the Skies, with Davis happy to kick the ball out for halftime with a nine-point deficit. It showed that, we can be in an arm wrestle and hang in there, said Jones, whose side held on for their 24th victory in 25 tests. That's an important habit to have. When you've had success, it's easy to sit back and complacency sits next to you. We knew we had to play a certain way to beat Wales and the execution by the players was outstanding. It's a win built around a lot of courage and a lot of belief. England winger Anthony Watson had to be withdrawn early in the second half and was replaced by Jack Noel. Prince Harry could be seen in the sellout crowd at Twickenham as he made his latest visit to the home of English rugby England's scrum half Danny Kerr releases the ball after a scrum as a pack Twickenham overlooks the brutal encounter before kickoff. Black market ticket sales were rife. Touts were offering £95 tickets, allocated to Uxbridge RFC. For £600 a pair in Wales eventually delivered some value for money. Rejuvenated flanker Aaron Shingler made a majestic break downfield and Jones was forced to call on his bench first as Sam Simmons and Watson left through injury. At this stage, we'd hope they'll both be all right for Scotland, said Jones. England are used to dominating the final quarter with their finishers but, here, it was Wales who ended the game in the ascendancy. Wales will be buoyed by the return of winger George North who finally made his way back into test action after injury Owen Farrell kicks the ball into touch as the last kick of the game to seal victory for Eddie Jones's team England gathered for a team huddle on the pitch at full time as they now turn their attention to Scotland on February 24 Gutland had talked up his squad's fitness in the weekend, before being substituted on 52 minutes. Hartley's final act was a scrum penalty under pressure from the Welsh pack. George North replaced Patchell after 56 minutes and Wales began to play with scarlet ambition. Anscombe danced his way out of the 22 with his footwork, cutting open England with a pitch-length break, but Sam Underhill's thundering one-arm tackle on Scott Williams saved a certain try. Farrell then dislodged Shingler, with Wales left through their handling errors in a 51-minute stalemate. Anscombe finally brought Wales within range with a late penalty, but an underhill turnover killed off the Welsh resistance as Newman ran for cover.